frustrating thing with NTSB is they can make all the recommendations in the world, but who is it, OIRA? Or it's another agency that is supposed to actually make the regulation. Well, ultimately, um, it ends up in the Congress, but uh, if it OMB, doesn't end up in the... Sure. Yeah, but uh, and I would just say that one of the things that we in RWU identified as one of the most important problems in East Palestine, to my knowledge, it was never raised in their discussions, and that is the marshalling question. Gloria probably knows some about this. In any event, that marshalling is how you make up the train, right? So one of the problems in so historic best practice in marshalling a train is you put the bulk of the weight at the head end of the train. So that, as you can imagine, if there was a problem on the head end, the heavy part wouldn't have a chance to get all kinds of dynamic motion and whatnot involved before it comes to a stop. So what instead, under PSR, under the current way that the carriers operate, they do what they call destination marshalling, which is the cheapest most convenient, most simple way for takes as little time in the yard as possible. And it's basically designed like, okay, well, you're going to go to this point, you're going to drop off some cars, you're going to go to that point. So you put them together that way. And they save time in the situation. But what happened in East Palestine is that you had a derailment and everybody knows the derailment rolls up to the melted axle, right? But the question is, there's derailments and there's derailments. Now, and many derailments, they're not that bad, right? So in this case, if they had done uh, proper, you know, best practices marshalling, they would have had the bulk of the weight at the head of the train. So when it derailed, the cars would have been more likely to stop in the near term instead of tumbling like an accordion or a slinky or a golf ball in a sock or something like that, because they had a third or more of the weight at the back of the train. So the train stops all of a sudden, and then the heavy stuff tumbles, right? And tumbling is bad in a wreck. It's a bad, you know, right ever. Uh, your best derailments don't tumble. They just stop. And so we raised it, and I've raised it in interviews and, and the media and stuff like that. But the NTSP and their wisdom to my knowledge, spent no time on that. And they regard it, I think, as almost everybody else does, as that that's the carrier's prerogative. If they want to do it that way, whatever, you know. But it's the same in that regard as them saying, well, there's no federal regulation of the hotbox detectors, which there is. There is no hot, you know, there's there's no regulation of them. And, and in the aftermath of East Palestine, the uh, Norfolk Southern told all of their people on the ground that if the FRA came around and asked them about the hot journal detectors, that they were to provide them with nothing. They were to co do no cooperation, that it was private, it was proprietary, and there was nothing, you know, you would think they would have, you know, the humility or whatever after what they had just done, that they would say, okay, yeah, sure, you know, Give us some advice. How could we do this better? Because this is the here's the thing: it, there will be derailments, and there will possibly be problems with axles. The question is: is coming out of this NTSB thing, are we actually going to be any better off? Are we going to be more prepared? Are we will are we will we have done the thing that might have made that thing not happen? It's it's not good enough to just say, well, it was their fault; they did it. It's got to be, you know, not only how can we do it better, but let's make sure that there's penalties if you don't do it better. Accountability. 